Hey everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to root your OG Pixel or Pixel XL on Android Pi just recently released and all the steps I'm about to show you should work on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So without beating around the bush, let's have a look at what we need to do before we get started. First up is to check the more info down below for any changed or updated details and the other thing is to back up everything that's on your device that you need such as your downloads, music, photos, contacts, SMS, whatever it is. Uh, make sure you back all that up and don't just keep it on your phone, make sure you get it off of your phone and onto your computer. Now I guess a popular way to do this uh, without root access of course is using the ADB backup and just manually copying things over using the MTP protocol. So you just plug in your phone and transfer stuff towards your computer or you can use ADB pool if you want to do something like that. But just make sure you get everything off of your phone onto your computer that you might need. And Things like app data and apps themselves are a bit tricky to do without root access, so you may be a bit limited in that respect. But anyways, once you've done that, there are a few other notes that we need to have a look at before we get started. And the first one is, of course, warranty information. Not too sure about this because I don't usually have to do any warranty claims on my phones, but for whatever reason that you do, your warranty may be void after unlocking the bootloader. You could relock the bootloader, I guess. Um, I don't think they can really check how many times it's been unlocked or anything like that. But if you're in a country that will support you, the consumer, uh, even if you decide to root your phone, then that's great as well. And also, rooting in or unlocking the bootloader may restrict some Android and third-party services. We've seen this before with Snapchat and Netflix and Pokemon Go, and of course Google's own Google Pay. So you might not be able to use those apps if you don't pass SafetyNet, but however, we are using Magisk to root our phone, so that means we're able to pass SafetyNet or bypass it in a way where we can spoof its actual values. So you'll be able to use Snapchat, Netflix, Pokemon Go, and also Google Pay on a rooted phone. But due to the cat and mouse nature of Magisk bypassing safety net and how Google can update safety net uh, on their own without requiring any kind of software update, this could change at any time. So if you are 100% dependent on things like Google Pay working or Snapchat working because your streaks are so important or anything like that, uh, you might not want to do this, but if you're alright with not being able to do some of these sometimes, like use these apps, we can get started. So just kidding, before we start, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer them as soon as possible, give or take one or two days. But if you hop on my Discord, um, it'll probably be more likely quicker for me to answer your questions because I don't have to go check it. Uh, so yeah, let's start. So there are a few things we need to download when we do get started. And first up is the Google USB drivers. Now, if you're familiar with installing drivers, that's great. You can just download the Google USB driver zip file here, check to agree with the terms and conditions, and then you can download the driver like that, clicking on the blue button. Now, if you're unsure of how to install this, or maybe your system already has the drivers installed, we'll have a look at that really quickly later on in this video. You can follow my driver installation guide and if we just have a quick look here, we have a Lee Mobile Android device. And if your version of Windows has already installed these drivers and they're not causing you any grief, you no know, troubles, then you can just keep using those drivers that have been pre-installed by Windows Update. So you don't need to install the Google USB drivers if these drivers work out for you. Next up, we need to download the SDK platform tools. Now this is just the Fastboot executables, EXE, all that good stuff for us to be able to communicate uh, our computer communicate with our phone and vice versa. So download the one for your operating system. I'm going to download the one for Windows, but if you're downloading or if you're doing this on a Mac, you download the one for Mac. And of course, if you're on a Linux distribution, you'll want to download the one for Linux as well. You can check which version they're up to right now. So it's version 28 and make sure you have the latest version as you will run into issues if you don't have that. Next up would be the TWRP custom recovery for your device. So I have two pages here, the for, one for the Google Pixel and one for the Google Pixel XL. So depending on which model you have, just download the one that's right for you. Once you've visited the link, you can click on download links. And before we do that, let's have a quick read of the status here, quite important. So currently on Android 9.0 Pi, decryption with the pin, pattern or password does not work yet. And there is no ETA for getting that fixed. And this is more or less uh, a recurring thing with every security update. So one month you may be able to decrypt your data partition or TWRP can and other months you cannot. But there's a quick, I guess, uh, fix for this usually is to remove the 
screen lock before you boot into TWRP. So I'll show you how to do that, of course, uh, later on. So with that being said, we're going to click on the one of the primary download links, depending on if you're closer to the Americas or Europe. And down here, you'll see two files or two sets of files, one called the TWRP Pixel Installer for Sailfish or Marlin, and the other one will be TWRP for Sailfish or Marlin, just the image. You can get away with just downloading the image file if you don't plan on installing TWRP to your device. And I guess if you have to remove the lock screen, it may not be exactly useful for you uh, to be able to access it without a computer. And if you just need to root your phone, you don't have to install TWRP permanently to your boot image. So that's also something else to consider. So you would have downloaded either the installer and the TWRP image or just the TWRP image. So I've downloaded both just in case. Same goes for the Pixel uh, XL. And last but not least, we want to download the latest version of Magisk Beta. This one is most compatible with Android P, so we're going to go ahead and press the orange download button. So in the end, you'll have these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 files, including the TWRP installer and TWRP image, the Magisk zip file, USB drivers if you need those, and of course the Platform Tools zip file. So I'm just going to close or minimize my Chrome window, and we can go ahead and start doing some things. So first up, we want to go to our phone here. So I'm just going to unlock it. I have a screen lock on it. It hasn't really been set up, but it is on Android P. If we just quickly go to the settings here, and you could probably tell by the notification shade anyways. So we go to About Phone, and we can see we're on the latest version of Android P. Hopefully that comes out well. So there are a few things we need to do before we get started. And first thing is to enable the developer options so we can enable OEM unlocking. So let's go to the system and About Phone. Then scroll down to your build number and tap that seven times until you get this screen to confirm our pattern and that would have enabled the developer options if we go back one and tap on that. Now I know some pixels such as the one from Verizon or if you bought it unlocked but from Verizon stock your bootloader may be permanently locked and you won't get the option to enable OEM unlocking where my finger is. So if that's grayed out for you I'll leave a link to a thread down below and how to bypass that. I'm not sure if it works on Android P, but it did work in the developer previews and on Oreo. So give that a go if your OEM unlocking is grayed out. You can follow the steps in that XDA thread. I'll leave a link down below. Now once you're able to unlock or turn on OEM unlocking, just do that and enter your pattern and tap on enable. And once you've done that, we can go ahead and boot our phone into the bootloader. Now in the bootloader, we're going to be unlocking our bootloader, which wipes our phone. So that's why at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we should back up everything on our phone, copy the photos onto our computer if you need those, or you can make sure everything's backed up to your Google account, now all sorts of things. So once you've gotten that ready, we can reboot our phone into the bootloader. So to do that, I'm going to press and hold the power button, and I'm going to select restart with the USB cable plugged in down below. And as soon as the screen turns black or freezes, hold the volume down button and just keep holding it until our phone boots into the bootloader. You can see we're booted into the bootloader right now and we're going to go back to our computer here with our device still plugged in to the bootloader and we're going to quickly check if our device has been connected. So this is the driver installation part. So I'm going to right click on our start button and click on device manager or you could search it up manually. You can see either you'll have Android phone up here or you might have some kind of unknown device and it'll have a little orange exclamation mark or you'll have the Lee Mobile uh, Android device and have the Android bootloader interface marked like that. So if we just go back to this video here, uh, you'll see that this says Lee Mobile Android device and it's somewhere near the middle and that would say Android bootloader interface instead. So this is where if you have any issues running commands later on, you might want to have a look at that video and see how you can get the official Google USB drivers installed instead. But as long as your phone has turned up somewhere under the name of Android Bootloader Interface, could be under another heading or title, uh, you'll be good to go. And to further test this, we need to open up the Platform Tools zip file. And we're going to play it safe here for all operating systems. You should get a Platform Tools folder inside the Platform Tools zip file. Just extract everything outside, like so. Shouldn't take too long. And once you've opened that, open the folder. And in the address bar, type in CMD on Windows. But if you're on Mac or Linux, you will need to open a terminal window to the same directory as where all your files are. 
and I'll put up a little picture right now that describes how you can run the programs such as fastboot or ADB from the command line interface or terminal depending on your operating system. I know on PowerShell you need to do a dot backslash and then type in the executable name. You can auto complete it using tab and I believe the same thing goes for uh, the ones on Linux and Mac OS. You will need to put in dot forward slash instead. So just as the picture says, but if you have any questions, yeah, just leave it down below and I'll try to my best to answer those for you. And once you've gotten that sorted out, we can continue with this. So we can go back one folder, so back to where the rest of our zip files are. And in the command prompt window or terminal window or PowerShell window, depending on which what you're using. And remember to prefix the fastboot or ADB executable name with whatever way you need to. So that's either the dot black slash or dot forward slash and we're going to type in fastboot devices hit enter and you'll be able to see the serial number of our connected device now if you see this it means we've done a good job and our phone is detected by our computer in fastboot mode so we're going to now unlock the bootloader we're going to type in fastboot flashing unlock like so you can see uh, our screen on our phone changed and now it says unlock bootloader so if I just bring that into the big view this just tells you what's going to happen they're going to wipe everything on your phone and we need to use the volume up and down buttons and the power button to select our option and it also says here that it may void warranty so be careful of that so what I'm going to do here is go up and press the power button to select yes can see the device is now unlocked. Now you realize our phone hasn't booted into the recovery to wipe itself yet, so we're going to press on start here, where we'll need to do a few more things when our phone boots up. So let's let our phone turn on by itself, and then we'll go through the rest of the process. So you can see the unlocked padlock down here as well, which means our bootloader is unlocked, and our phone should wipe itself. And I'm going to fast forward this until we get back into Android. Okay, so our phone's booted up and you can see it's already reset itself. It did take a roughly three minutes, but that's pretty good. So we're gonna hit start and at this point, you're actually able to set up your phone as usual. Uh, you can add your Google account, start downloading apps and all that, unless you plan on moving to a custom ROM. But at this point, since our bootloader is unlocked, we should be able to root our phone without any more data loss or anything like that. So we can connect to Wi-Fi and set up our account. So I'm going to quickly do all this and we'll get back to it. Alrighty, so our pixel is booted up and I've just quickly set it up with a pin or passcode so we can check out if TWRP or what to do when TWRP can't decrypt our data partition. So what we're going to do next here is change a few settings. So if we go to settings and scroll down to system we will need to enable developer options again. Let's quickly do that. Enter our pin and let's go back one. And once we're in the developer options, you can see that OEM unlocking is now grayed out since we've unlocked the bootloader already. You can scroll down here to automatic system updates. Now these settings are really for people who want to continue using their pixel on the stock Google ROM and won't be flashing ROMs anytime soon. We can disable automatic system updates this is so our phone doesn't automatically download updates and then try to apply them when we reboot our phone. That will cause some issues if we're not careful. And if you want to, we can enable USB debugging as well. So once you've enabled those options and of course disabled automatic system updates, since we know in advance that TWRP does not or cannot decrypt our data partition on Android Pie, we're going to go to security and location. We're just going to go into our screen lock settings and then choose either none or swipe and remove our device protection. And once you've removed your screen lock, before we reboot back into the bootloader, what we're going to do here is copy over the necessary files that we're going to flash onto our device. So just transfer it, or change it over to transferring files, and then on our computer, just copy the TWRP installer, although we can't really use TWRP uh, on Android Pie just yet without removing our screen lock, and our Magisk zip file. Just copy those files onto our pixel, just on the internal storage we'll do and we're going to hit paste and you can see both our zip files are here and once you've done that we can then reboot our phone back into the bootloader 
So we're going to tap, uh, press and hold a power button, tap on restart, and just hold the volume down button when the screen turns black or freezes. And just keep holding it until our phone boots into the bootloader. And once it does, we can go ahead and go back to our computer here, and where we'll type in the fastboot boot command. So we're going to type in fastboot, space boot, leave a space after boot, and drag in the TWRP image, and hit enter. Okay, hit enter on the wrong thing. But once you hit enter, it should boot, and our phone should also start booting into the TWRP image. Now from here, our phone should not ask us for a data decryption password, but it may ask you if you want to allow system modifications. Now if you plan on taking OTAs, your best bet is to make it read only, but if you don't mind, you know, you're going to flash some custom ROMs, or you're going to flash the factory images, then you can swipe to allow modifications. But once you've gone past that screen, you'll be greeted with the TWRP main menu. And from here, we're going to tap on install, scroll down to the bottom of our SD card over here. It's called SD card, but really it's your internal storage. And we're going to either flash the TWRP installer. So for example, in the future, uh, when TWRP uh, makes the decryption work, you might want to have TWRP installed on your Pixel. Uh, but for me personally, I don't do that. So what you would do in this order, you would flash the TWRP installer first, and then you would flash the Magisk zip file. But in my case, I'm not going to be installing the TWRP recovery onto my Pixel permanently. I'm just going to go ahead and flash Magisk. Now you can see here, it'll start doing all its stuff, patching the boot image and creating a, a data image for Magisk. So we're just going to wait for it to do its thing here. And once that's done, what we need to do is tap on Reboot System. And if you're prompted to install the TWRP app, you can if you want to, but I don't like bloatware. So I'm going to uncheck those both and tap on Do Not Install. And it shouldn't ask you again for a long time at least. So I'm going to wait for our phone to boot up to, into Android, where we can see we should be rooted. And we'll have a look at some root apps just to verify that as well. Okay, our phone's turned on. Let's unlock this guy, and let's see if Magisk Manager pops up. It may take a little while for it to come up. If not, you can install the APK that you can download from the XDA thread, but it should pop up sooner or later. Just give it a moment. There it is. And if we tap on Magisk Manager, we are actually able to see that we're installed the latest version here. Well, we've installed the version 16.7, which is the latest beta version. And down here, we can start and test the safety net status. It may not pass because of some things I've seen on the internet. They're saying uh, one of the APIs or something like that has changed and they need to update something on Magisk. So if it says the response is invalid, we can't check that right now, but I believe it should be working. You can test it on one of your apps later. And if you need to hide any apps from you know, Magisk or the safety net, I guess, you go to Magisk Hide and just check the app that you want to hide from root access and all that stuff. And if you want to download some modules, you can go ahead and download it here. Okay, so I've just installed a file explorer, and if we can access the root directory, and it should ask for super user access, and we can tap on grant, and everything should work as planned. Here we are. So that's it for this video, guys. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below, or you can join me on Discord and leave a question like that. But that is how you root your Pixel or Pixel XL on Android Pi using Magisk. So once again, thanks for watching guys, and as always, happy flashing.